So it's that time of year again, early spring. Everything's starting to sprout. You can see a lot of a lot of uh, green shoots on the on the ground, and some of the early trees uh, starting to leaf, like uh, hawthorn. You can hear the bird song. It's beautiful. So we're going to go and have a look at some um, wildlife today that's coming up. Hope you enjoy. easy to identify young stinging nettles relatively safe if you touch them top to bottom like that not the sides they have microscopic glass tubules around the sides that um, deliver the, 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 the nasty irritant that, that causes the stinging nettle rash um, I've noticed I usually find them in association with cleavers these things uh, little edible weed but um, often used by school kids sticky willy you can throw it sticks to uh, fabric obviously nettles are also edible nettle soup that kind of thing pairs really nice with some wild garlic although i don't think we'll find any of that in this valley today so just among the bluebells here you see a really common early sprouter this will become much more obvious as the season progresses this thing here this is cow parsley let me uh move over here excuse the tug you can see the very characteristic leaf here this will grow I don't know about three foot tall in the kind of uh, early summer forms huge thickets throughout these kind of shaded woodlands this is a member of the APACA so family that also includes carrots uh, wild carrots parsley that kind of thing although I tend to stay away from these guys because um, they also include some pretty nasty species like uh, uh, hemlock water drop wart that will uh, famously kill you right dead so although wild carrots uh, uh, va variants and, and different species within the APACA are, are very easy to identify because of these very distinctive leaves um, I tend to stay away from them as edibles but still fun to find and identify nonetheless so uh, mentioned haw hawthorn beautiful common tree the British Isles um, I notice it as one of the trees to uh, produce leaves earliest in season like late winter around the same time that you might see snowdrops coming up and disappearing but the the leaves are quite famously edible mm. when young they have a kind of a very grassy taste I think they were colloquially called bread and cheese historically very strangely I don't know why the tree also produces hawthorn berries that were used for vitamin C substitutes in the Second World War, I believe. Full of vitamin C. You can actually make a nice fruit leather out of it, apparently. But uh, I haven't done that yet. Anyway, yeah, hawthorn. Great early, early season spot. One of my favourite early signs of, of the arrival of spring is this little yellow flower, uh, Lesser Calendine. It's a member of the Buttercup family. It's really easy to spot. I mean, it, it, it comes up after after snowdrops, like very late winter, early spring, um, and you can see it's it's quite these quite characteristic heart-shaped leaves. I find it tends to appear in quite well shaded areas uh, poorly drained kind of damp but yeah it's, it's a, one of the one of the couple of flowers that you'll see really early in the season after early crocus and snowdrop but probably before bluebells lovely little flower So alongside the uh, yellow lesser calendine, you might occasionally come across my other 
favourite spring indicator, which are these wonderful white flowers. This is wood anemone. It's uh, again in the buttercup family. And like the lesser calendine, I've observed that the, the flowers close during the evening and, and open up during the day for pollinators. Uh, it's quite a different leaf, almost Sherville like, parsley like leaf. But you can see these wonderful white flowers. Now, although not entirely uncommon in British woodlands, it's used as, as, as one of many uh, ancient woodland indicators, uh, as it, I think it spreads only a few feet every century. So it's really slow colonizer of the forest floor. Um, so you have to have a relatively undisturbed woodland for these, these guys to thrive. But yeah, another lovely early spring uh, wildflower. fungus that you can find all year round. It's quite common if you know where to look. Saprophytic, so on dead wood. But it's uh, called a turkey tail polypore. Trimites versicolor I believe. So it's one of the only mushrooms you'll, or fungus you'll see all year round. Um, it's really easy to identify. It often occurs in these kind of clusters and it has some beautiful colors. These kind of stratified multicolored rings. So it's used in a lot of uh, kind of uh, new age and herbal medicines as it's extremely high in antioxidants so some people make tinctures and what have you although i believe the jury's still out on the kind of safety but um, it's interesting nonetheless here you can see a uh, wonderful large carpet of, of ground elder this is an early herb that will mature throughout the spring imaginatively called ground elder because the leaf the compound leaves look like uh, those from an elder tree and some of the flowers also look like elder flower but this is a i believe in a semi-invasive herb that was bought one of the many that was bought to uh, the uh, british isles by the romans as a pot herb, um, it was historically used as a, as a salad leaf. Uh, these early shoots, apparently quite like spinach. Haven't tasted them myself, but um, yeah, find them throughout the valley here. Again, I think it, I think it prefers slightly wet environments, so a lot of um, early moisture and then late canopy cover. But yeah, it's another one to keep your eye out for. Look out for the, the, the flowers of the mature plants. Look like uh, elderflower. Here you can see some early sprouting elder on an elder tree. Elder trees are really easy to identify. If you find dead bits of branch like this and you snap, they have, I don't know if you can see, a really pithy, soft core. Um, really spongy inside, very easily easy to identify tree and very distinctive kind of bark, often covered in light green algae moss type stuff, as you can see here very distinctive bark but yeah these these young leaves look a lot like those the ground elder that we saw earlier but yeah later in the year these will obviously have elder flower which could be used to make uh, any kind of juice or cordial and then later on elderberries which I found once once ripe once they're past the green stage the green stage contains some cyanide I believe um, once they're ripe into their black elderberry phase, they make a wonderful compote or jam. But yeah, that's for later in the year. Here we have some very early wild horseradish. Don't want to pick the leaves. So I want it to do well so I can get it later on in the year. I'll say that I've cheated. I know it's here because 
I saw the full grown leaves last year, they're quite tall, wavy, glossy like leaves, almost like a fern. Um, I think, I think this might be a little bit of root there. I think it is, yeah. You've got another one coming up here. I won't say too much about this, other than we'll hopefully see it later in the year for another video. So, just off the path, again, bit of a surprise find, quite early, I think, I mean, this is, I do find these mushrooms late into, into winter, but there's usually a bit of a gap, this is, um, I believe, a sulphur tuft, should be able to check it out, yeah, yeah, there you go, so these are quite common saprophytic mushrooms, um, I find they have an almost luminous greeny yellow stem. Um, and a slightly darker gill set with these kind of uh, caramel cover coloured umbonal kind of umbrella shaped caps that go to yellow but stay, you, you stay away from these in terms of culinary use they are pretty toxic but quite common beautiful, beautiful fruit and mushroom there amongst some of the uh, emerging greens at the edge of the path you can see some cowslip beautiful wild primrose species see these, this cluster of, of, of uh, flowers quite unusual very beautiful lovely to see beautiful blackthorn blossom I think it's quite similar to cherry blossom but they have these really long anthers absolutely gorgeous stuff hopefully these will all get pollinated 